Duenuge Edward Henry Pedras was a Selenese militia officer and a prominent socialite. Pedras was executed for treason by the British Army under martial law during the 1915 Sinhalese Muslim riots. Convicted in a three-day field general court-martial under the terms of the Army Act, by passing the local legal system, his execution was viewed as unjust by the local population and a warning to local leaders. It hastened the movement toward independence, providing motivation and a martyr for those who pioneered the movement. Father, D. D. Pedras and mother, Malino Pedras Henry Pedras was born in Gaul in the southern part of Ceylon, as the youngest of five children and the only son of Duenuge de San Pedras and Malino Fernando Pedras. Daughter of Peace Officer Margaris Fernando of Carandania. Both his father and uncle N.S. Fernando Vichasicara were leading businessmen of the time, and his family was among the wealthiest with ownership of graphite mines, plantations, real estate and trading interests. Pedras first attended Royal College situated in the Pita. From there he joined St. Thomas College where he excelled in sports and shone as a good cricketer, playing for the school's first 11 cricket team. After some time he returned to Royal College where he again played cricket and engaged in other sporting activities. Pedras was a teetotaler and was an active member in the Colombo Society. Joining the family business, his father hoped that Pedras take over his business enterprises and become a leader in the commercial sector. With the outbreak of World War I, the British government mobilized the Ceylon Defense Force and raised the Colombo Town Guard, a militia unit of volunteers to defend Colombo from potential German raids. Pedras opted to join the Colombo Town Guard as a private and was the first Sinhalese to be enlisted to the new regiment. He soon became an excellent marksman and due to his excellent horsemanship was made a commissioned officer in the administrative section. Within a year, he was promoted to the rank of captain. This, along with his immense wealth, resulted Pedras being much envied by many. The Sinhalese Muslim riots, which began in Kandy when a group of Muslims attacked a Buddhist pageant with stones, soon spread across the island. The British governor of Ceylon, Sir Robert Chalmers, feared he might lose control of the colony and, on the advice of Brigadier General Malcolm, utilized a heavy-handed response towards the riot. Chalmers declared martial law on June 2, 1915, and ordered the police and the army to shoot without trial anyone who they deemed a rioter. With the escalation of the violence, looting broke out within Colombo. Pedras, as he was responsible for the defense of the city, successfully managed to disband several rioting groups after peaceful discussions. The jealousy felt towards Pedras and his family by both the British administration and their Sinhalese agents, led by Solomon Diash Bandaranaike the Maha Mudalayar. Culminated in false charges being drawn up against Pedras which eventually led to his court-martial. The charges were that Pedras shot at a group of Muslims and had incited people to march to the city of Colombo from Peliagoda. Based on these accusations, he was swiftly arrested. Following his arrest the British, fearing open rebellion, imprisoned more than 80 prominent Sinhalese leaders. Among those imprisoned were D.S. Senan Ayak, D. R. Vijawardena, Edwin Vijaratna, Dr. Cassius Pereira, E. T. De Silva, F. R. D. Ishbandar Anayaka, H. W. Amarasaria, A. H. Molamur and several others. Captain Henry Pedras' tomb at Kanate Cemetery. Following his arrest, Pedras brought before a field general court martial at the headquarters of the general officer commanding, Salon in Malay Street. Slave Island on July 1, 1915. The court martial board was made up of British officers of 17th Punjab Regiment and Pedras was defended by advocate L. H. Dalvis. He was accused of treason by levying war against our Lord, the King by means of levying war by firing two revolver rounds into the air. The field general court martial quickly found Pedras guilty of the charge of treason and sentenced to death. The date of the execution was set for July 7, 1915 without any form of appeal. Having been sentenced to death under the terms of the Army Act, the death sentence had to be ratified by the governor. The case of Pedras was not referred to the governor by Brigadier General Lee Malcolm. An omission that was protested by the governor, and later cases were dully forwarded. Following his conviction his family, filed an application for writs of certiorari and prohibition in the Supreme Court of Ceylon to which relief was denied by a bench comprising Chief Justice Sir Alexander Wood Renton. Justice Shaw and Justice Thomas de Sampaio. The judgment was never published in the new law report. The only person who was able to intervene in this case was Sir Hector Van Kuhlenberg, who was the elected representative in the legislature, but his representations were not taken seriously by the military. Many prominent citizens and educationists, both British and Selenese alike, appealed against the judgment without any impact. 
an appeal was made to King George V. On July 7, 1915, Pedras was stripped of his rank and executed by firing squad made up of Punjabi soldiers from the 17th Punjab Regiment. His body was buried in an unmarked grave, in keeping with military tradition of a burial of a traitor, against the wishes of his family. However, D. D. Pedras had people spy on the transport and burial of the body, and the British had actually chosen a cemetery where the Pedras family owned several plots. One of those plots was chosen for the interment, and only one or two members of the Pedras family knew the exact location. In 1987, Pedras's suspected grave was unearthed, and the remains were verified as his and reburied. D. D. Pedras had gained a life insurance for his son at the amount of 25,000 rupees, a substantial sum in 1915. The insurance company, Manufacturers Life Insurance Company, refused payment on the grounds that Pedras was lawfully executed. The administrator of Pedras Estate filled action on the District Court of Colombo and District Judge Wadsworth dismissed the action, uploading the contention of the insurance company. An appeal was made by Benjamin Bawa and Eugene Wilfred J. Wardine to the Supreme Court and it was taken up before, Chief Justice Sir Alexander Wood Renton C.J. and Justice Shaw. The decree of the district judge was set aside the case was sent back for further inquiries, the plaintiff having to prove although convicted, Pedras did not commit treason. Back in the district court, Manufacturers Life Insurance settled the matter with a full payment, presumably under pressure from the colonial government. Pedras's death was also meant as a warning for other Selenese leaders who were leading the independence movement. After the execution the blood-soaked chair Pedras was sitting on during the execution was taken to the prison cells that contained many Sinhalese leaders including D.S. Senanayak and shown to them with the warning that they would be next. Many claim the execution of Pedras by the colonial government marked the beginning of the Sri Lankan independence movement with many people especially from the educated middle class taking an active role in it. Their action resulted in Ceylon gaining independence in 1948. Governor Chalmers was removed from the post and made undersecretary to the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland Lord Winborne. The powers of the Muddleyers were abolished when the native department was closed down in 1938. In 1916, D. D. Pedras built the Isipathan Aramaya Temple in Havelock Town, Colombo in memory of his late son. Two statues of Pedras have been erected in Havelock Town and in his hometown Gaul. The statue in Havelock was commissioned to the well-known sculptor Henry Darmasino of Panadura. On the occasion of unveiling ceremony of the statue in Havelock Town, then Prime Minister Ranasinga Primadasa stated that the adjacent sports grounds should be renamed in his memory. On July 7, 1987 the Edward Henry Pedras Stadium was declared open by Prime Minister Primadasa. Didi Pedras built a pilgrim's rest in Polonarua and named it the Edward Henry Pedras Rest which was maintained from income gained from lands owned by Pedras in Anuradhapura known as the Kutum Pokanakal and the Basuakulamakal. Pedras's mother, Malino Pedras gifted the land for the Malakarama Temple in Dimatagoda in 1920 in her son's memory. Thanks for watching.